Good morning and welcome to Sunday Morning Beers. Good morning. This is kind of the uh, second edition, the uh, first edition of this. There's going to be two editions uh, this Sunday. Um, the first edition was a little long and uh, it will be uh, strictly on uh, Facebook, which allows for uh, longer videos. And then uh, the version that we're doing right now will be on both YouTube and Facebook. So make sure you check both of those out. With us, uh, once again, our special guest, uh, Lily, the Yay. cat, who is really pushing herself to be uh, kind of a co-host, I guess. Uh, I guess it would be really more of like a round table with three of us on I the show. Suppose. I suppose. Um, uh, but she doesn't really talk a lot. No. Um, I think it's more of like she just wants to be in the limelight. She likes the camera time. Yeah. But she is very pretty, so, uh, you know, there's nothing so, wrong with no, that. No. And, mm -hmm. uh and she doesn't ask for a cut of the royalties, and there aren't any to give her anyway. No, uh, no. So, uh, so that's fine with us. And, and she, she's nice and warm. Mm -hmm. She keeps my lap warm. <laughs> Let's uh, talk about the beer that we have. Uh, we've already uh, drank uh, quite a bit <laughs> since this is uh, multiple takes of this. But uh, something very uh, unique. I know it's very cliche to drink a dogfish head beer. Uh, because when a lot of people think about craft beer, they think about dogfish head. And that's fine. That's good for them, you know. Uh, because their beers are good, no doubt about it. But we just, you know, we kind of try to give uh, a little something to other people because uh, they're big enough. But uh, this is Miles Davis Bitches Brew. And uh, if you think that seems kind of weird that they would do that, this artwork that you see on here is actually uh, Miles Davis, the legendary uh, jazz musician, uh, had an album called uh, Bitches Brew. This is actually the cover artwork on there. Uh, I think the name Bitches Brew is much more suited to a beer than it is to a jazz album. But either way, a very unique beer, very, very hyped beer when it came out. Uh, they actually talked about this in the show that they had on TV there for a while, the Dogfish Head show that was on TV. And uh, what's in here is it's a blend of uh, Tej, which is an African mead, and unlike most meads, um, they don't want just the pure sweetness of the honey in the uh, Tej, so they use in their uh, Rhamnus pernoids, also known as shiny leaf buckthorn. And uh, in Ethiopia, they refer to that as gesho, and that's what it says on the label here, the gesho. Those leaves of the buckthorn are bitter, and so it kind of cuts that sweetness. What Dogfish Head did was they made their own version of Tej, and then they blended it with an imperial stout. So if you see here why this is black, and you, if you've ever had mead before, you say, well, that shouldn't be looking like that. That's stout. It's uh, the two parts. It's two parts imperial stout, one part tash. So that's what it is. We've already had it, but uh, we're going to taste it again just for your benefit. What it is is... Bitter. It's, yeah, it's, it's very coffee-like. It has... It tastes like... Uh, somebody put too much coffee grounds and not enough water in the coffee pot. And we were saying uh, it's acidic. It's very yeah. acidic. Yeah, well that flavor of just the too much coffee, the acidic, the roasty bitterness, that is by far the dominant flavor in there. There is the faintest and faintest of hints of honey in there, which I don't think most people would even get. This would be really know. good with chocolate, like to pair it with chocolate mm -hmm. because if you had a nice I can think of a couple things you could uh, pair this with that caramel, would be good. Caramel, caramel, something sweet against the bitterness, but the coffee, you pick that up. Oh, I can think this uh, a few things that this would be good with food-wise um, as both a pairing and a contrast mm -hmm. of the flavors in here. But by itself, not to say that it's horrible, it's just it's really it, it makes you thirsty. It really does, because it is just so dry and acrid. It's a sipper. It's not a, go a guzzler. No, sure. by any means. Um, probably a little disappointing for the for the big, big hype surrounding it. But, you know, if you get a chance to share it with somebody, you know, I wouldn't go out and pay the big bucks for that bottle just for yourself. But it's worth, you know, checking out mm -hmm. uh, for sure, by any means. It's unique. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of unique... Uh, we want to tell you about um, what's going on Thursday at uh, Fourth Street Brewery. Um, you know, we're kind of trying to make the show a little bit more than just uh, what's going on uh, at Fourth Street Brewery, but there are some time constraints, and 
We do have something very interesting going on on Thursday, so I think it's worth talking about. We have two beers on Thursday. Uh, the first beer we have is called Secondhand IPA. And after you know thinking about it, uh, probably wasn't the best name because it's really more than a second hand. Uh, you may know that a few months ago we were able to get our hands on some used uh, whiskey or bourbon barrels from a small distillery in Texas. It's called uh, Balcones is the name of the uh, distillery. And they make something very unique. It's a blue corn whiskey or bourbon. It's the only uh, one of its kind in the whole world. Blue, it's called Baby Blue. And uh, they sell the used barrels because, you know, with bourbon and whiskeys, they only use them once. And then it's either throw them away. Probably at one time they just threw them away or sold them as planters. But now, you know, breweries and wineries... Uh, want to get their hands on those barrels. So we got our hands on some of those barrels and uh, the first uh, set of barrels that we got we put a Beer Normus Imperial Stout in, aged it in there, uh, served it uh, for uh, New Year's Eve and then uh, courtesy of uh, Chris Stiles we actually got two more barrels because he didn't want the bourbon character in there. He wanted us to mm. use them to get the bourbon character there. We put more Beer Normus in there and did that again for St. Patrick's Day. But going back to the first set of barrels that we had, uh, after I took the Beer Normus out of there, I actually fermented a beer in there and inoculated it with uh, wild yeast. And that was called Barrel of Funky. It was a very, very good beer that we had recently. And then after taking that out of there and doing nothing more than just a light rinse, I put... Um, some Tasman Bay IPA in there, filled the barrels up with Tasman Bay IPA. And so you're talking about a barrel that had blue corn whiskey, beer normus, a wild yeast beer, and now a, uh, an IPA in there. So this beer has a lot of complexity to it. It's got, if you have a very sophisticated palate, you might get a little bit of uh, the bourbon character in there. Mostly what you're going to get is that very nice oaky flavor you're going to get a little bit of that wild yeast in there. Not sour, you know, if you're not a sour beer fan, don't think that. Just kind of more of a yeasty fruitiness. And then, of course, you're going to get a whole lot of that unique uh, bitter IPA character out of this uh, secondhand IPA. So there's only 10 gallons of it. You're definitely going to not want to miss it. Make sure you come on Thursday. And then we also have a very cool cast condition lager up north Pilsner, which is a rye Pilsner, aged on pecan wood. So two very, very unique beers in small quantities. Definitely going to want to come in there on Thursday and check them out. Even more unique than this beer that we're sure. drinking here, which is uh, much more famous than Port Street Brewery for sure. But uh, come on Thursday and uh, check out two really cool beers. So okay. a lot of other things going on. We'll see you at Fort Street Brewery this week, uh, for sure on Thursday, and hopefully more than that. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Have a great week. Take care.